what I really want to get across is that is much more of a mindset than it is just, oh, I, I know how to write a class. It, it, you can learn how to write a class in five minutes. That doesn't mean that you necessarily uh, know exactly how the, the mindset and the approach to, to object-oriented programming. There's a lot of developers who have a lot of opinions about what you need to do this coding thing for a living and be good at it. But I often find that their opinions tend to be better for them than they are for you. And that's part of the reason why I created this podcast. To cut through the crap and give it to you straight. And you won't always like me. You won't always agree with me. But I will tell you the truth. I'm John Morris and welcome to The John Morris Show. Now let's quit the yakking and get to it. Hey there, John Morris here, johnmorrisonline.com. Welcome back to another episode of The John Morris Show. This one, we're going to get into OOP. We're going to be talking classes, objects, property, methods, and try and break this down. This is really kind of a primer. If you're new to OOP or object-oriented programming, I haven't really dug into it yet. This is kind of going to give you the big picture idea. I'm also, just FYI, I'm creating a going to be creating a course on this full where we go into the whole kit and caboodle and go through OOP and PHP and show you how to build classes and all that sort of thing. So, But I want to give you this primer first. Uh, if you'd like to be notified when uh, that class goes live, just go to johnmorrisonline.com slash OOP, O-O-P. There will be a notification list there for you to enter your name and email, enter your name and email, and then I'll know you'll fight you when the cl- uh, class is ready to go. I'm working on it right now. All right, so with that out of the way, let's let's go ahead and get into this. And I think this may be a little bit different than what, if you've read about OOP before, this may be a little bit different than what you've seen because I think people tend to overcomplicate this and they use examples that, I mean, when I was first learning, I was like, what? It just didn't make any sense to me. So I want to talk about it in maybe a different way to maybe make it a little bit more sense. But I want to make a couple points first before we get into this. So the first one is... Object-oriented programming, a lot of people think of object-oriented programming as like this magical thing and that when you learn it, then you just automatically apply it to everything you do and it magically kind of makes your code better. And there's a couple problems with that. One, OOP is not always the right, the right choice for every project. Some projects, it's unnecessarily complicating. And so it can actually make things harder than they need to be. That's usually simpler simpler projects. OOP is really, really great with big, large, complicated projects. And and that's where it really shines. But when you're getting into simpler projects or projects that are much more sort of website oriented, it doesn't shine as well and sometimes can be unnecessarily complicated. So I would say that if I were to break down the ratio in the stuff that you're coding, I would say that 90% of the time, you would probably want to use object-oriented programming. If you're a real hardcore, you could probably even push that up to 95 if you really want to debate it. But there is this sort of little area where this 5 to 10% of projects where it doesn't make sense. It actually makes things more complicated than they need to be and you shouldn't be using it. So not to get I don't want to get into the bait of those numbers and, and necessarily talk about when and where, but what I, the point I want to make is that it's not some magical thing that just automatically makes you you a better coder. The other thing is is it's it really is an approach to programming. It's it, in a way a lot of ways it definitely is some technical things that you need to do, but really in a lot of ways it's more of a mindset. It's more about the way you think about your application. And the way that I would say that is, is you could write classes for your application and still be writing procedural code. So it's more than just knowing how to create a class. It's knowing what the idea behind object-oriented programming is, why we want to use it, and then the scenarios where it works really, really well. And that's kind of what I want to really lay into today. So to try and kind of explain 
all of this out. The, the mindset behind object-oriented programming, the way I look at it, is it's really meant to mimic the way we as human beings interact with the world around us and also interact with the technology that we work with. So if you look at the world around you, it really is an object-oriented world, right? You, you look around, you see a house, you see a car, you know, I see a camera in front of me, I see a microphone. And so you have all of these different objects that you see and you interact with. And each one of those objects has certain characteristics to it. And then it also does certain things or can have certain things done to it. That's object-oriented programming. I literally just described an object, the properties of that object, and the methods of that object. So, for example, let's take our microphone right here. The object is the microphone. The properties of the microphone are that it's black, that it's yay long, that it's this size and diameter. Whatever properties you could extrapolate out of this microphone, those are its properties. And then its methods is that it records audio. So that's literally what object-oriented programming is. Now, when we apply that to code, so an example that we might use in code, I always like to use examples of CMS because I think a lot of people are familiar with it. If you look at a CMS, you have a series of objects. All those objects have certain properties and they have actions that they can either take or have taken on them. And so, for example, you and one thing to keep in mind is that there's always this uh, implicit object of user. OK, so the way I like to think about it is if, if you've ever seen those movies where uh, someone is like in the hospital, they're in a coma and they're like having this out of body experience. So they're like standing by their bed, looking at themselves in the hospital bed. It's kind of what you're doing as a coder when you're engaging in object oriented programming, because you are essentially separating yourself or taking a step back from the application and putting yourself in the sort of implicit role of the user. And then you are creating an application that you, the user, can sort of interact with. So you're like, you're kind of abstracting yourself away from it a little bit. But again, if you look at a CMS, you have, so for example, let's just say you have posts, that would be an object. And so that object would have certain properties. It would have a title. It would have content. It would have a publish date. It might be the IP address that it was submitted with, uh, the slug for, for accessing it, the ID of, of that particular post. It would have a set of characteristics that describe that content, the data about or the, that object, the data about that object. That is your properties in, in, in a sense. And then there would be certain things that can be done to that object. So that object could be created. It could be read, it could be updated, and it could be deleted. Now, that should sound familiar to you. Cru create, read, update, delete. That's CRUD. So when you're programming applications, and then you, you might have another object called category. Again, a category would have certain properties, uh, the name of the category, maybe a slug, maybe there's some other, uh, maybe it has a description, maybe there's even an image that gets associated with it. So it would have all sorts of properties, and then it would have things that could be done to it. It could be created, it could be read, it could be updated, it could be, de de be deleted. Okay, so now you have these two objects, post and category, and then and when we're talking about methods, CRUD is really kind of the foundational. What you're going to find is that pretty much every application, the objects all do the same thing. It's CRUD, create, read, update, delete. That's pretty much across the board what you're going to find. There's also two other things that then can be done with those. So they can be put into relationships. So you have posts, and let's say you wanna put a post in a category, that's creating a relationship between that post and that category. And so that is another sort of thing that can be done uh, to objects is create relationships between them. Or if you had tags, you could put, uh, add a tag to a post, and that creates a relationship between them. Or an author, you could have this author wrote this post, that post. The user, the author, would be its own object, and you would create a relationship between the post and the author. 
And then the last thing is metadata. I won't get into that too much, but you can add metadata, optional data about uh, individual about individual objects. And also you can add metadata if you need to or want to about relationships between objects. So if you break it down, an application really is a set of objects that has properties. It uh, has certain actions that can be performed on it or it can perform. And then it has relationships that can exist between those objects. That's an application <laughs> for the most part. And that's object-oriented programming. So again, the post is the object. The data about it is the properties. And the actions that can be done to it or done by it are the methods. So when you're thinking about, and this is why I say you can, if, you, if you're not thinking this way, you can put, you could write a class and put a bunch of functions in there and still write them in a very procedural way. If you're not thinking about how to build their app application in an object oriented way, you can very much fall into procedural code and it still all be in a class. So it very much is a mindset. So again, we have objects, we have properties, and we have methods. The last thing that we have is we have the class. And so really the difference here is between a class and an object. So the way to think about this is a class is really a blueprint. So when you're writing the class, you're actually writing the blueprint for an object. The object is the actual thing that's created from the blueprint. So we'll take the example of a house. If you look at a set of blueprints for a house, you know, it's going to tell you it's going to tell you how to build the house and so forth, but it's not necessarily going to give you all the specifics, all the data. It's not going to tell you, you know, what if it's wood floors or carpet or or uh, if it's going to be uh, tile or whatever, it's not going to tell you that the outside of the house is going to be painted red or that you know, the fridge is going to be stainless steel. All that stuff can change. But what it will tell you is that there will be an outside of the house. There will be floors. The, this is where the fridge will go. These are the where the countertops are. It's going to give you the general framework and then you fill it in with data. And when you fill it in with that data, that's essentially when you are creating it from the blueprint. So if you again, if you take this idea of blueprints, you could go and create five different houses from the same blueprint that all have stuff that's a little bit different about them. One could be red, one could be green, one could be white, one could be purple, whatever. One could have wood flooring, one could have tile flooring, one could have carpet. It's the same blueprint, but they're all a little bit different. And it's the data that's input into the blueprint that helps determine that that makes them different so when you instantiate uh, an object what you're doing is you are creating a version an instance of that of that class or for, of that object from that class from that blueprint so again the class is the blueprint and then it's able to be sort of changed and, and manipulated when you actually create an instance of it. So again, if we go back to our CMS example, individual posts that you create, individual records in your database, you know, this post has ID 1, ID 2, ID 3, ID 4, they, they all have different titles and different content. Each one of those posts is essentially an instance of that object. It, it's an individual object stored in uh, the database. And so that's essentially what what you're creating and you're using the class to define the blueprint by which that is, is done. So that's what object oriented programming really is. I mean, we can obviously get into all the technical parts of how to build and construct all of this, the, all of this, all the technical details, but in, in, in reality, what it is, is an approach. It's a mindset. It's a way of thinking about the applications you're building. So what you want to do to start engaging in object-oriented programming is you want to start breaking the applications you want to build instead of looking at them as processes that uh, that need to be accomplished look at them breaking them down into objects so what are the individual objects if i'm going to create a cms i need posts i need categories and say i decide i need tags and then i have the user the implicit user so i have four objects so for each one of those, I need to be able to do CRUD. I need to be able to create relationships between them. 
and then I need to be able to add metadata to them. That's your application. You go out and you, at that point, the code sort of writes itself because now you know, okay, for this post, I need to be able to do CRUD. I need the relationships and here's the properties that I want. I want the title. I want the content. I want the publish date, whatever else you decide for the category. I want, you know, the, the name, the slug, a uh, description and a little image for tags. I just want a name, etc. So you can sit there and literally map all of this stuff out. And now the the code kind of, like I said, it kind of writes itself. So that is my introduction to object oriented programming. And what I really want to get across is that is much more of a mindset than it is just, Oh, I, I know how to write a class. It, it, you can learn how to write a class in five minutes. That doesn't mean that you necessarily uh, know exactly how the, the mindset and the approach to, to object oriented programming. So can take that for what it's worth. As I mentioned, I'm going to go obviously more into detail in the course that I'm creating where we actually do get into the full technical stuff and start talking about how to create and do all the uh, of this sort of thing. Uh, and if you'd like to be notified when that's ready, again, johnmorrisonline.com slash OOP. All right, that'll do it for this episode. If you liked the episode, be sure to like it. Subscribe if you haven't. If you're on YouTube and you're subscribing, make sure you hit that little bell thing so you actually get notified uh, when when videos come out. If you want all the past episodes, you can go to johnmorrisshow.com. You see all the past episodes there. And if you'd like to get access to P, uh, module one of my PHP course, head on over to John Morris Show. Click on the start here link. And if you rate and review the podcast, then I will send you module one of my PHP course. So again, all those instructions, johnmorrisshow.com. Click on the start here link. All right, that'll do it for this episode. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next time.